Welcome to You Can Do It Too, a podcast highlighting regular folks who followed their dreams and made it happen. I'm Joan Hutchinson, your restaurant maven. I've been described as a risk taker, though I never thought of myself that way. My mom always told me I could do or be whatever I wanted as long as I set my mind to it, and I believed her. I ran a successful catering company that led to owning and operating a top 10 Orange County restaurant and catering venue prior to earning a bachelor's degree in business management and marketing. You know what I learned by going to school after all of that? You don't need a degree to accomplish your dreams. You need drive, passion, and a belief in yourself. You also need some caring folks who support you and believe in you. I didn't need a formula to tell me how to properly staff for a week. I needed common sense and a deep care for creating outstanding dining experiences for my guests. I've been coaching and consulting with salespeople and small business owners for the last few years and blogging with business advice. I just wanted to do more, to reach more of you. I decided to talk with folks I admire who kick ass at what they do to show you that you can do it too. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining me today. I'm Joan Hutchinson, your restaurant maven, and today I am talking with Matt Wilson. Matt is a visionary entrepreneur with a passion for creativity and business. Born and raised in my home state of California, Matt began as a teenager working in retail nursery sales. With a unique ability to craft awe-inspiring landscaped environments featuring artificial rock waterfalls during his time in San Francisco, Matt's foundation for creativity and forward thinking was firmly established. Matt spent a lot of time in his kitchen and took an opportunity to become co-owner of Tucanoos, a restaurant in Costa Rica. Now Matt has written a book titled Other Side of the Money Tree, Secret Marketing Perspectives for Small Business Success. In this comprehensive guide, Matt shares his journey of navigating the turbulent waters of the pandemic, which forced his restaurant to close. Despite adversity, he emerged stronger with unique marketing perspectives that transcend industries and elevate small businesses to new heights. In his book, he talks about the art of brand storytelling and how to captivate your target audience with compelling narratives. He also shares how to embrace the digital landscape, master data-driven decision-making, and harness the potential of impactful content to position your brand as an industry authority. He teaches you how to empower yourself with strategies to navigate challenges, learn from failures, and build sustainable success for your small business. Welcome, Matt. Hi, (laughs) Joan. Happy to be here, happy to meet you. Yes, so good to meet you. And I'm so um, really excited to hear all about you and your journey. So thanks. Thanks again for joining me. Absolutely. So you're going along and you are creating these awesome landscapes for people. Um, what possessed you to get into the restaurant business? Honestly, Joan, my wife and I, uh, it, it snuck up on us. We, we realized that we were complaining to each other inadvertently. We had no knowledge that it was coming out as complaints, but it was regular and it was daily about the grind and the urban density of the San Francisco Bay Area where we had lived for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And we we just, I think we just got worn down. The older we got, we said, this is just nonsense to spend an hour driving to Safeway, a local grocery store chain or Home Depot to drive an hour home. It, it was nonsense. And we said there had to be more to life. And so we sat around the dining room table a few sessions and I had been a pretty proficient home chef for 50 years and pretty talented for the last 30 years. And my wife excelled in social media uh, marketing campaigns, marketing engagement. And so we thought we had uh, a, a combined skill set that, you know, we might do something. 
So long story short, I had purchased the property sometime before I met my second spouse. And she was surprised when I said we own property in Costa Rica. <laughs> she said, well, let's, let's go look at it. And we got there and we rubbed heads together and said, why don't we start a restaurant? And so we did. <laughs> had either of you worked in a restaurant before? No, that would have been the easy approach. That would have been the normal, <laughs> sane approach. <laughs> so you got to, it's baptism by fire. Absolutely. But, you know, and honestly, we both had independent of each other traveled extensively around the world. I mm -hmm. had eaten at the very finest restaurants on earth, and I've eaten in hundreds of restaurants on earth. So mm -hmm. I know customer service. I knew I have a really keen flavor palette. And so I, 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 I know what the general public wants. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I like you, I didn't go to culinary uh, school. I, I didn't have a degree in, in gastronomy, but I had profound common sense and keen awareness and I'm pretty proficient at it. Yeah. So you, so, so you had this property and then you built, you actually built the restaurant or was the restaurant, so, was the so building on clear, there? This is in the Pacific Northwest province of Costa Rica, the most touristed mm -hmm. portion in the, what's called the Guanacaste province. And mm -hmm. I had bought a two acre ocean view property to build a home on. The nearest community to that is a little tiny place called Playa del Coco. And so in that community, we found a building in what was called a Spanish square style with six mm -hmm. other restaurant competitors. And we purchased that building within that square. Oh, okay. Okay. So almost like a rest, a, like a restaurant court where there's. Correct. Yeah. Oh, I yep. see. About I uh, see. 200 meters from the beach, 600 feet from the Pacific Motion. And nice. uh, we, that's what we could afford. And uh -huh. so we went about decorating the space and we, we ultimately had wild and unexpected success. And, and to preface that, this place was only 600 square feet, 60 okay. square meters. I mean, it was tiny with an upstairs loft yeah. and a wash station outside the back of the building. And that was it. Nice. That's good. I, I always say the smaller, the better, right? Correct. That's what I think. I, that's what I think when it comes to a restaurant, the smaller, the better, because uh, exclusivity makes people want to be there. Well, more importantly, it doesn't risk everything that you have to prove your concept. It gives All you right. a little bit of runway and, and the ability to watch every aspect of your your new business uh, right. with some certainty. So were you working in the kitchen? I, Joan, I, I created all of the recipes from scratch um, okay. and a very, very, very passionate uh, cook. I'm obsessive, I'm obnoxious about flavors and <laughs> hypercritical of my competitors. <laughs> Unfortunately, okay. it makes going out to dinner with my spouse these days very difficult because <laughs> she's tired of my complaining. Hmm. But I created all the recipes, including all the beverages, uh, all of our menu items. Hmm. And in addition to that, I even enhanced uh, manufactured products like ketchup, mayonnaise, and sour cream. I put our own stamp on it all under the pretense of eliminating as much competition as humanly possible. I didn't want somebody to come along and say, hey, you have the best French fries and ketchup in town. We're going to copy you. They couldn't because of what we did. Nice. Very nice. I like that. All right. I have, I have a ton more questions to ask you, yeah. but be before, well, well. before we move there, I've got to hear from my sponsors. So let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. I am lucky to have some 
amazing award-winning cheeses right up the road. Door Artisan Cheese in Egg Harbor, Wisconsin offers small batch cheeses that have been winning awards for years. And in Wisconsin, that's some tough competition. You don't have to live in Door County to get these cheeses though. Just go to DoorArtisanCheese.com and check out their selection. Their most popular is the Top Hat Cheddar, but my favorite is their beer-washed Gouda called Valmy. Check them out for yourself at DoorArtisanCheese.com. If you're an expert in your field, have a unique story to tell, or an interesting point of view, it's time to explore the world of podcasting with KitCaster, a podcast booking agency. You can expect a completely customized concierge service from their staff of communication experts. KitCaster is your secret weapon in podcasting for business. Your audience is waiting to hear from you. Go to kitcaster.com slash maven to apply for a special offer for friends of this podcast. Welcome back, everybody. You are listening to You Can Do It Too. I'm Joan Hutchinson, your restaurant maven, and I am with Matt Wilson, whose company, Secret Sauce for Success, uh, we're going to talk about next, right? So um, I'm assuming Secret Sauce for Success came prior to your book because you've also yeah. written this book, right? So uh, I, my whole backstory was once COVID uh, destroyed our hopes and dreams for the near future, mm -hmm. I got into writing content, marketing content, after observing how hard, how long, and how difficult the Costa Rican population worked to achieve very, very little return. Uh, for their efforts. And so I took it upon myself to start writing marketing content in a hopes of sharing that with them through a defunct Facebook group called How to Make More Money Selling to Gringos. And so <laughs> I, I, said about, <laughs> I said about writing. Now listen to this. This is how obsessive I became with my free time. I wrote a, a blog every single day, seven days a week for seven months nonstop. Oh. And that content became my book, Other Side of the Money Tree. That was the offshoot project. And that's what our Facebook uh, you know, group is the secret sauce for success to hopefully inspire and educate other mom and pop restaurateurs around the world to emulate our success. Right, and right. So, you know, I, everyone knows that COVID was just horrible and especially for restaurants. I mean, there's low enough margin as it is. Everybody works really hard in that industry. And it definitely closed many, many, many doors. And I, you know, I don't know how California or New York restaurants survived it at all. Um, it wasn't as bad for us here in the Midwest. Uh, but it was just horrible on the coast. And I guess since since Costa Rica, where you were, was a big vacation spot. Locals didn't vacation there. Or what was it like? So it, it, it was worse than that. Um, the Costa Rican government closed Costa Rica. We were ordered, citizens in Costa Rica were ordered to shelter in place. That is off the beaches. You cannot go anywhere. Stay where you are and shelter in place, and you were allowed to go to the pharmacy, the doctor, the grocery store, or the gas station, dependent on the odd or even number of your vehicle's license plate on a Wednesday or a Sunday. And wow, holy camoly, it, yeah, 1970s it gas it was <laughs> shortage. It was unbelievable. That to think that you couldn't go to a remote beach with not another soul uh, legally, you you couldn't. 
Wow. And so oh. our place, remember, I just said 600 square feet. I'm, I'm going to jump ahead just a tad. When they allowed us to reopen, you could reopen at 50%. And it yeah. just wasn't yeah. worth the grind to open at 50% in a square with six other dying restaurants. And tourists were not coming in. Tourists, uh, Costa Ricans and, and expats were not allowed to leave. And so we were frozen in time. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Wow. That is insanity. I'm so glad I didn't live there. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I'm beautiful. sorry for you. <laughs> I, I, I will give a quick plug for Costa Rica. It's an absolutely stunning place to visit as a tourist. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I can't give my full endorsement after living there for four years to move there. But that's my own opinion. Oh, my. Yes, I've heard it's gorgeous. I, I think I have some family who's been there, but I have we, not. We were very, very proud of our accomplishment in that tiny, tiny little uh, money machine. We earned a staggering $1,000 a day, day net profit. Wow. And wow. mind you, we both worked in addition to employees, but we... Uh, we're bringing in a 30% margin, a thousand bucks a day, and we rocketed to number one on TripAdvisor out of 922 competitors in a whopping five months of opening. Wow, that is phenomenal. That is it phenomenal. Be, it, it just won't be duplicated. It just won't, it would be a, a freak of nature if somebody could come along and, and duplicate that. But, but we did right. it. Made all the more proud. We, we've never done anything in the restaurant business before. Wow. Wow. That is shocking. I mean, they say three to 10% is good. And I know a lot of restaurant coaches who say 20%. Let's count on 20%. 30 is pretty phenomenal. I will tell you we were pretty clever in the sense that we made every product from scratch or enhanced it like I said and mm -hmm. we upsold nearly 40 percent of our tables either our sour mandarin dessert tart to go or mm -hmm. one of our three salad dressings bottle to go or our barbecue sauce to go mm -hmm. and so we upsold literally everybody and uh, had just a, a phenomenal run with that and wow. uh, extreme uh, social media engagement. We, we were posting, my wife was posting three to five times a week uh, storytelling campaigns and mm -hmm. she's a commercial photographer as well. So the imagery was shocking. You know, it's really spectacular mm -hmm. stuff. It wasn't just another food picture from our kitchen. Right, right. That always helps. So, so now you are coaching and consulting with that, small that businesses. That is exactly correct. We ended up moving to San Miguel de Allende, an uh, UNESCO World Heritage City in Mexico. We're about three and a half hours west of Mexico City and about four and a half, five hours east of Puerto Vallarta. And uh, I do consulting for mom and pop mom and pop restaurants, like I said, around the world and uh, trying nice. to get into food manufacturing just tiptoe at a time. I'm not jumping in with both feet, but I'm interested in getting some of our product line into major manufacturing uh, hmm. when that, that opportunity ultimately presents itself. Well, I did interview somebody who has experience with that. His name is Stephen Dresga. I'll, I'll get you his info when we're done. Yes, please. That would be awesome, Joe. <laughs> yeah, really, he, really helpful. he is an importer, but he does, he manufactured food in the past, and he's currently got a pasta sauce line um, that he does. So, yeah, I'll get you his info. That would be really fun. Yeah. So now, uh, so you wrote this blog and then you decided to do a book, which I, it's for sale. So um, the 
Money Tree. The other side of the Money Tree is That's available correct. on Amazon, right? That's correct. That is correct. So, so you you self published? Uh, yes, yes, and that was really difficult <laughs> um, to write a book. I don't care who you are. To write a book takes a real focused discipline. And I encourage everyone to write a book, not okay. to make money, to prove to yourself that you have the discipline. Because if you <laughs> can do that, you can do anything. You can be successful <laughs> in business. You can be successful in uh, fellowship groups. You can be successful with your friendships. It just it takes a real focused uh, mind to stick to it. But then my wife says, you know, I, I'll format it for you. I'll put in the decorations and all of that for this book. And that took her weeks to make it look as attractive as it is mm -hmm. uh, to a much larger audience. But it's a real easy read in the sense that they're real short stories in big groups like the topic of differentiation i might have six or eight stories to differentiation or the psychology of marketing in easy to digest readings so that you can read one or two or six a day and not feel burdened uh, to to keep going in a dull business book type format um it's 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 for everybody from a mom and pop uh, brick and mortar perspective, uh, what you don't know. And it's, it's that easy to <clears throat> interpret and apply to making mm -hmm. more money. So uh, it, it, and it's specifically for restaurant people or is it? No, no, it, no. It's the book in is general. for anybody who's an entrepreneur, anybody. Right. Um, right. However, I, I will say it's slanted or leans towards a brick and mortar location mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to online, but there's applicable uh, content for both, but it leans towards brick and mortar more than the other. And, uh, but it is well-rounded. It, it's literally for everybody. And, and it offers, uh, towards the back of the book, I give several suggestions on some really clever uh, business ideas. That, that run of the mill people just don't think of. Like, for example, starting a microgreens uh, company in your kitchen or growing uh, edible seaweed in saltwater tanks in your backyard. Those are all possible and those are already existing businesses that people do, but conventionally you wouldn't think or ever hear of those. And I try hmm. to offer that. So. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. So, so your your wife helped you not illustrate, but typeset and and include photos and things like that. So the two of yes. you work pretty well together. Haven't strangled each other working together, huh? I I, I can't answer that directly without smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I will say this: she won't do another restaurant with me. <laughs> See, I, I know where she's coming from. Huh? But I, <laughs> my my but husband, the I, chef, uh, hears me say I, the same thing. I couldn't, I positively could not have done it without her. But, you know, when you have two very strong personalities, you must stay in your lane. And sometimes it's easy to jump into your spouse's lane to give your wisdom and opinion, which is not wanted or correct. <laughs> Or correct. Okay. <laughs> and that could be on your side or hers, right? Exactly. <laughs> oh, exactly. We're not saying who's. <laughs> so so you've done so you've done all these these totally different well the the first two totally different things. You keep moving and growing clearly. So tell me about let's see, what is the biggest lesson you learned? The biggest lesson I've learned in life or in the restaurant business? <laughs> well, I would say let's do both. Do the restaurant business first, and then I'd love to hear the biggest lesson you well, learned in life. The biggest thing I learned is that you, you, first person, are, are more capable 
than you're aware of. And I think most people on earth are simply looking for permission, permission. And this, this is a, this goes way back to even in your childhood where your parents allow you or give you permission to do something or in college professor gives you permission or in society, society gives you permission that you can do something. And so many people settle for what I call this redundant monkey see, monkey do. Everybody has a store, me too. Everybody sells cars, me too. Everybody starts a restaurant, me too. And there's no real differentiation or real clear uh, approach to being unique in the terms of a Disneyland an Uber, an Airbnb, a Zappos, before they were thought up by regular people like you. And mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm certainly not making a comparison to those giant multi-billion dollar machines, but they started as an idea in somebody's house. And all anybody wants is for their friends or their spouse or their family members to give them permission to try something that seems odd or quirky or scary or stupid from their perspective, including moving across town, moving across states, or for us, moving completely out of the country. And we lost, you know, a number of friends and acquaintances because they thought we were emotionally unstable. Why else would you leave the United States of America to go to Costa Rica to open a restaurant that you know nothing about? Mm -hmm. And so I wonder how many people, how many young people are being held back because their parents or their or their community is not pushing them to experiment or expand their thinking beyond normalcy or societal normalcy. I, I really wonder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good it's that's a good point. And that's part of why I do this show because we all need to know that if it's something that we're passionate about, we need to go for it. Right. Exactly. I mean, uh, follow what drives you and uh, jump over the hurdles and, and see what comes of it. And often I, I often hear people say, you know, you, you want to do something and you have something in your mind and you're, you've got these big plans and you start towards it and then know that the end result is probably not going to be that, but it's just part of the journey, right? I, my daughter, uh, my daughter wanted to work with kids and thought she would be a teacher and, um, started even when she was pretty young was taking some child development classes like in middle school even and then did some in high school and so then when she got to college it was teacher but even freshman year she was saying hmm I don't know if I want to be that but we she continued on the education path until she was a junior and said okay this isn't what I want to do I and now she's uh, in her master's program to be a therapist, but for children, her focus is still children, but right. you know, her path is just gonna move along and that's okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's your, your restaurant experience, that's a, you know, there's the example. Well, okay. So this, you know, horrible thing that's out of your control shuts you down. As long as you take something good from it, learn from it, and use it to move forward, but, right? But more, more importantly, Joan, the, the message is be, be ready and be able to pivot. And that's a big chapter in my book is the ability to pivot from what once was into something mightier. And I'll share with, with you and your audience, you might even know this story, but there is a a uh, wall cleaner uh, from a company called like Kuval, I think, with a K, long time ago. I think mm -hmm. in the 30s or 40s or 50s when coal heaters were a thing in the homes. And coal would blacken the side of wallpaper and painted walls in the house. And this putty was made to clean that off the wall. 
And as coal phased out in terms of gas heat or, or natural gas heat, cobalt, cobalt was going out of business. There was nothing to do. But one day, somehow, miraculously, some woman or a, a, a wife of an employee had this stuff and took it to her kindergarten class. And they had made little shapes that entertain kids. It was perfectly safe. And I'll jump to the punchline, which you already know. And that so became a billion-dollar brand called Play-Doh. Wow. That <laughs> is the power of a pivot. So yeah. you start down one path thinking that, you know, you have to get over the finish line. And if you don't, you just simply have to see around the corner for another opportunity that's within the same sphere of, uh, I guess, concept or idea. Right. Right. How to, yeah, take what you're doing and turn it into something else. That makes sense. I, I like that. That's um, a great way of thinking. I did talk about pivoting on my last episode because uh, we had problems with our recording. And so my show was just me talking about how I had a problem with my recording. So guess what? You just get me today. Um yeah, we have to pivot every single day. You you know, there's something that you said. You said you have an uncanny ability to keenly observe human behavior and think on your feet. And that's so necessary in restaurants, but really in life, right? Well, I, I, I will share with you a little intimate detail about that that I'm not proud of, but it's served me my whole life. My, I'm 65 years old, and I grew up with a father from East Texas. And that was back in the times of corporal punishment and, and pretty serious discipline. And mm -hmm. I'll just leave it at that. And if I wasn't hyper aware of what my dad asked me to do in terms of chores or get me or hand me, I had a pretty serious, uh, you know, <laughs> time what? with the consequences. <laughs> Uh -huh. And so I, I learned to watch his facial affects. I learned where he had his eyes, what he was looking for, what he wanted, when he wanted it, how he wanted it. And it, it truly has trained me to read people's personality and energy very quickly. It's helped me tremendously in sales. Uh, it, it's, it's kept me out of danger uh, my whole life. And so... I'm proud of the fact. I don't like how I got the lesson, but I'm proud of the results of the lesson because it, right. it's really worked. It's really, I've observed it because, Joan, too many people these days are ridiculously busy being busy. They're not necessarily achieving anything or achieving great success, but as long as they're a hamster on the wheel, they feel they're accomplishing. And that's what I mean by busy. So, Mm -hmm. There is there is never been more opportunity for entrepreneurship in the history of the rotation of Earth, but for now. I mean, it's unlimited. However, too many people are too busy to look around and observe it. And in today's society, you have to be hyper creative and hyper aware to take advantage of the 20 million businesses that you could start, that you would be an original in or could excel in above and beyond your competitors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it takes just stepping back maybe and taking a look at it from a different perspective. Or from an outside perspective, like a mentor or a consultant. Mm -hmm. okay. Who says, did you know? And the answer is always no. I didn't know where I would be doing that myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah makes sense wow um you have poured out a lot of info i let i really enjoy talking to you today um likewise i'm trying to think if there's one more because i wanted to ask had you always wanted to write a book no so uh, no <laughs> no no a and i don't want to write another one but <laughs> But, but, but Jonah, I, I will tell you, 
I learned that I'm pretty good at writing despite flunking an English uh, high, uh, high school English course. Despite <laughs> that, I enjoy writing. And with the advent of chat GPT, uh, the, it corrects my punctuation and, and sometimes poor grammar. And uh, it's enabled me to write really articulately in, in, in my voice. Mm -hmm. and and to get my ideas across so there'd be no reason for somebody to say well i'm not a good writer i don't like to write because there's no excuses anymore mm -hmm. and like i would mentioned earlier just the exercise of doing it for the sheer discipline of it will open up creative portals in your head that you won't you won't have realized or unlocked before that process well awesome I'm I'm going to get to work. <laughs> All right. Well, I just want to thank you again for joining me today, Matt, Matt Wilson. So everyone needs to check out his book, The Other Side of the Marketing Tree is what I wrote, but it's the money tree. The other that side of the money tree, right? Um, on Amazon. Real quickly what that means. Everyone looks for opportunity through the front door. Everyone walk through the front door. That's where the money, that's where the opportunity is. There is absolutely more opportunity and more money to be had by walking around and coming in through a back window when everybody else is going in through the front door as a crowd. And that's what that inference is, the other side of the money tree. Nice. Using your so imagination think, and creativity. Yeah. And think unconventionally about your business journey. What what can you do to really significantly differentiate yourself, your business, without just being silly? Mm -hmm. It's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna give some great advice. So everyone needs to check it out. I hope so. All right. Yeah, so uh, we all have it in us to succeed. I know you do. I do. Definitely Matt Wilson does. So believe in yourself and you can do it too. So make sure if you haven't already, you like and subscribe to You Can Do It Too on wherever you get your podcasts. So thanks again for joining us. See you next time.